What's up? This is Patrick. Marco. And in this video, we're gonna talk about hiding future dates for calculations in DAX. Stay tuned. All right, so I've been hanging out with Marco all week, experiencing the master in DAX class, because he yeah. is the master of DAX, right? <laughs> and uh, I, I, I chatted with him about this future dates thing, this article that you wrote, right? Yeah. It's a good article. I hope so. It's a good article. And it was interesting because I've kind of clued my way through some ways to figure this out. And then after reading the article, I was like, mm, not doing it the right way, Patrick. And so I decided, I was like, hey, Marco, let's do a video on this. And of course he said, good idea. Good idea. Let's do it, Patrick. And I'm like, all right, let's do it, Marco. So, so the problem, the problem, the problem is, first, the problem, the first. problem first. So whenever I build out my date table, yeah. Often, I build it with more dates than I actually need. You have to. The date table must be complete. Otherwise, time intelligence functions may not work correctly. But when I create my tables or my visuals in Power BI, sometimes when I do time functions, time-based functions, they show dates that I don't want to see. Correct. I have an example. Okay. So instead of me talking, I think Marco yeah. was saying, Patrick, instead of all this talking, <laughs> let's head over to his laptop. All right. Okay. Look at this. Yep. I have this first uh, example where I have uh, a sys amount. Yep. And a sys amount, uh, if I only keep the sys amount, I will see only dates until August. Yep. But August has dates until the 7th of August. Got right? it. But the problem is that once I create the sales YTD, sales mm -hmm. year to date, mm -hmm. uh, what is the easiest way to create the sales year to date? If I look at the formula I created, uh, the formula is this, dates YTD, date, date. Easy, right? Piece of cake, Easy. piece of yeah. cake. So we have our date table, mark this calendar. Everything mark, works. Marked as a date table. Yeah, marked as a date okay. table. Yep. But uh, the problem is that now, because I have in the date table dates until December, yes. I yes. see that, yes, because I have sales until August, uh, December is uh, everything I sold until August. Right. Problem is, if I have uh, sales until the 7th of August, probably I don't want to see the value for September, October, November. If I drill down here, I don't want to see this year to date uh, for dates uh, after the 7th of August. Because that's awful. Yeah, people don't like but, it. But yeah. they won't complain either, though. No, but we can do better. We can do better. We can do better. We can do better. So, best way, simple solution yeah. is, uh, what if I create a column in the date table that tells me whether the date should be shown or not, uh, based on the fact that uh, it is a date that contains meaningful data. So, I need a date table. And regular gonna, one. And I'm going to, just a regular one. Regular one. However I want to get it in. However I want to get this date table in. No worries. And I'm going to extend my date table, which is by, by adding one column. One column. And the logic could be date to date less than today. Or, because we don't know, we may have dates until two, three, four days ago. Yeah. Latency. And so I wrote here. Oh, oh, date, oh date. latency. So we can accommodate latency I mean, or challenges in our model that may exist because maybe that you receive the the data one week later oh, you know yes, you, you may have yes. some delay yes 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 yes, yes. everybody loves real time yep, yep. but uh, nobody has the real real time so <laughs> now if i write the simple format the simple form is saying this code is executed for every row of the date table mm -hmm. if the date is less than or equal to the last day available in the sales table order date mm -hmm. True. True means I want to see this uh, this date. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, false. And false means uh, I want to hide this date in my reports. Okay. This way, the date table is a valid date table. It has all the dates in one year, and the year to date functions or time intelligence functions are happy. So, for people that don't speak DAX, okay. right? For people that don't speak DAX, what this column is doing is saying, Show true when there's sales, show false when there's not sales. Correct. Okay. So that, this and, is for us that don't speak DAX. And if you don't speak DAX and you don't have sales, <laughs> uh, you can write whatever produces true for the dates that you want to see. So for your requirements. Your requirements is different. Just change this. So, right? So we're interpreting. I'm interpreting DAX for you guys, right? That's Marco fine. speaks DAX. I'm the interpreter. All right. Let's okay, go. Let's go. All right. Because I have this column, what I can do now, if I go back to the report, what if I use this column, 
as a slicer in the report. So the new column we added. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we huh? just added a column. Yep. If I put this column here and I create a slicer, mm -hmm. and let me just uh, uh, extend this font so yep. it is more visible. Now I have no selection. But as soon as I select true. But wait, wait. Yeah. So these are the columns I want to get rid of, or yeah. the rows, or whatever yeah, I want yeah, to get rid yeah. of. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because these uh, have, I have no sales after, I mean, these are data of uh, many years ago. So and these are our future dates. Yes. The, the future means that the 8th of August 2009 uh, is a date that is in the future, because this is what I had in the 7th of August. Gotcha. August. Yes. So yeah. the date table is complete, but the sales table only has a yeah. transactions until I made transactions. Mm -hmm. So from the point of view of this data set, the 8th, 9th of August is a future date. Yes. And I want I want to hide it. Yeah. All right. They have false in the date table now because of my logic, yep. my business logic. Yep. If I have uh, this uh, slicer, I can set true. Done. It's like magic. Like magic. It's Dax magic. It's Dax magic. But we can do better because uh, I have uh, to include the slicer in my reports. I don't like it. So if I use this approach, though, yeah. I also got to tra train my end users or put it in a filter or somewhere and say, don't touch this if you want to have a nice, clean yeah. matrix or whatever it is I'm visualizing. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, the thing is, um, this way, if I publish a model, I'm forcing a user to remember yes. to include the filter, the page filter, a report filter, yes. I don't want this. Mm -mm. Imagine people that connect to the Power BI model from another report, I don't like it. So yeah. how can I make life simpler to the user? We want it to be dynamic. Dynamic. Yes. So I created a measure here. This is sales YTD hide V1. You see that this page doesn't have a slicer and it just work. How is it possible? It's a trick. I moved this definition of the filter into the calculation. Oh. But there is a small trick here. Okay. I cannot just put the filter in the calculate statement together with dates YTD. I have to use this trick. I have to use calculate table that says, I want the dates YTD, the time intelligence function, yep. executed within this filter. I showed the year to date, only the dates that I want to see. This way, the YTD, the year to date calculation says, oh, you have only dates until this date. Yep. So you want, to, you want only these dates. I obtain the same effect that I had if I cut the date, yes. the date table. But this way is much smarter because I have another way to solve this problem, which is not good. Can I show you? Yeah, show me, show me. I have another file here where I did a similar thing. In this case, instead of having dates until uh, uh, August, I just cut the date uh, until uh, March. Uh, sorry, until uh, January, 3rd of January. Hmm. So in this case, uh, what I did, I removed the dates from the date table. If I go to the date table, look at this. The last day available is the 3rd of January, 2009. The dates, the remaining dates in the 2009 don't exist anymore in this file not only in the sales table, but also in the date table. Mm. But this is a condition that could affect the time intelligence function. And um, I show you an example. Yes. Now, if I go to this report, you see that I created a, a year-to-date calculation. The year-to-date actually is working. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But uh, the previous year-to-date calculation, so the year-to-date in the previous year, yep. because I want to do a comparison. Yeah, yeah. Look at this. I have two versions. One work. This number is the year-to-date of the 3rd of January 2008. Mm -hmm. It is correct. Okay. This one is completely wrong. It's the entire month of 2008. If you look at this number, 656,000, oh, yeah. is the value I have here. What is the difference between these two functions? Are you I show, show you. us? Okay. This one is the right one. Dates YTD, same period last year. I can combine two time intelligence functions in DAX. But if I use this order, number is good. If I use the opposite, I do the same period as here before dates YTD, it doesn't work. And if you ask me, what is the right order? You know what I answer? What's your answer? I don't remember. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't want to remember these details. Uh, I had to be worried about the order. And by the way, this is not working in this day, but it's just an example. There are right. many other combinations that have yeah. the same identical problem. I don't want to lose time on this. Yeah. For this reason, I prefer the other approach that I've shown you here, that is the approach we described in the article, where the simplest way is just one more column, full date table, all the dates, 
just one more column I filter by this column. Now, if I move this filter into the measure, I'm sure that any user using my model will always see good data. And I don't have to worry about filters. Yeah. I don't have to worry about changing yeah. my table. Correct. It just handles everything. And as new data comes in, it just automatically it just appears. Works because it automatically updates the calculate column too. Got and it. as you see, the only trick is this calculate table that I have to remember to apply to the dates YTD. Is, wow. uh, yeah, we had to remember to do that, but uh, it just worked. Yeah. Um, now, for the year to date, this is not really because you say, Mar Marco, but in the previous model, okay, I cut the, the, the date table, but it was working. Mm -hmm. What I've shown you is that the previous year to date was not working. That's right. Here, we use the same uh, solution. So we can write the code in a bad way. Mm -hmm. If I write the code this way, and I show you the, the, the measure, this measure that just calls same period last year yeah. doesn't work. Right. Why? Because I didn't include my filter. That's right. You see the problem. If I have the calculated column, but I don't apply the filter, it's not working. Right. How can I fix this? I already fixed this here. This calculation is working correctly. What I did, I show you. I simply repeated the same, the very same pattern. Wow. Calculate table, whatever you want to do with the time intelligence, with a flag. Jeez. That is with sales equal true. It's just that and simple. And it just work. Just that simple. And we also have, now in case uh, you cannot add this column, yep. you have a problem. You have to solve the problem in a different way. Yeah. And the article has a lot of dash code that solves the problem without uh, having to add another column. All right. Good. But if you can add the column, it's add the much column. Easier. That's the best approach. Yeah, yeah, of course. All right. So I read the article. I think the article's great. I hope um, so. <laughs> my customers that I've helped implement it, they love it because they hate all those blank values, especially the repeated values. The on repeated year values, yeah, because you see these numbers, you don't like all these additional rows. Yeah. 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 So we got to say thank you to Marco. But what I'm curious about is how are you guys doing this before? Have Are you showing the blank values? Are you showing the repeated values before this great article? I'd love to know. Post it in the comments below. If this is your first time visiting the Guy in the Cube channel, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. And if you like me and Marco's video, you gotta give us a big thumbs up. As always, for myself, Marco, and Adam, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. See you. <laughs> He's gonna use the first one. <laughs>